Dear audience, as we know, wind energy has been studied extensively in these days, but there are still many questions we don't know yet. One example is how to increase the power output as much as possible. In this talk, I will introduce a new approach that can be used to enhance the wind farm performance. This movie shows the flow over a wind farm. Blue color denotes the by waves. Because of the wake effect, power production of downstream device reduces significantly. The by waves will recover by interacting with the flow above. In very large wind farms, this interaction is dominated by the electric energy flux. There are several methods that can be used to increase the wind farm power output. This group found that the highest production happens at smaller angles than those corresponding to perfect staggering. Here, the group found that the energy extraction is increased 16% by controlling turbine loads. Stanford group designed and tested the awake steering method. They found that the power output increased about 10%. Due to the speed up effect, wind breaker could also be used to increase the power output. This finger shows a wind farm constructed along a sea wall. As the flow speeds up over the sea wall, the by power output is increased about 1.5%. In the lowest group studied the wind breaker effects on a single turbine and very large wind farms. The dust line indicates that wind breaks can increase the power output of a single turbine. The solid line indicates that wind breaks are not beneficial for very large wind farms. However, whether wind breaks can be used in small wind farms remains open. In this study, we will answer this question by using large edit simulations. To validate our numerical method, here we compare the simulation results of the flow over a wind break with the field data. The flow is solved by large edge simulation. The wind break is modeled by activated disk model. The good agreement between the lights and symbols confirms the validity of our method. Here shows the power increase based on the flow over a wind break without any goodbye. The dashed lines indicate that the power output increases linearly as the wind break height. These symbols are the simulation results with twice. The error bars are the standard durations. For low wind breaks, the simulation results agree well with their predictions. For high wind breaks, significant durations exist. This result indicates that the interaction of turbine with high wind break is much stronger than with low wind break. In these fingers, we show the wind break wise effect on the power output. The wind farm has six rows of wind turbines. In front of each turbine, there is a wind break. Two wind break heights are considered. Clearly, increase the wind break Wise up to 3D has a positive effect on the performance of the wind farm. However, increasing the wind break wise beyond 3D does not benefit the performance much. For the same wind farm layouts, we also studied the porosity effect. As expected, wind breaks become more effective with small porosity. This trend is much more pronounced for the first row than the wind farm. This is because the first row performance is dominated by the speed up effect, while the wind farm performance is also affected by wind break waves. To further understand the wind break effect, we perform the simulations with wind breaks installed only upstream of the first few rows. The last the left two fingers show clearly that installing a wind break in front of the first row can increase the power output of the first row, but reduces the power output of the second row. 
a similar phenomenon is observed for installing wind breaks in front of the first two rows and the first three rows. The right finger shows that the wind fan performance increases with the increasing of the wind break number. It also shows that the first row benefits most from the wind break. To study wind break height effect, we, perform, we performed 17 simulations with four different wind break heights. The first finger reveals that the power production of each turbine is increased by the wind break with the lowest height. The second finger indicates that the effect of wind breaks with intermediate height depends on the spacing between the device and wind breaks. The last two fingers show that high wind breaks reduce significant power output and increase the turbulence fluctuation. To show more clearly the height effect on the wind farm flow, let's see two short, short movies. The first movie is the flow over the wind farm with low wind breaks. Due to the speed up effect, wind break is a positive effect for the wind farm production. The, sec the second movie is the flow over the wind farm with high wind breaks as the wind break wake impacts directly on the turbine area, the wind farm production is reduced. Next, let's see the effect of spacing between the bites and the wind breaks. The diamonds show that for low wind breaks, the spacing has a small effect on the power production. The blue triangles indicate that wind breaks with intermediate height can increase more wind farm production than low wind breaks. The yellow triangles reveal that wind breaks that can increase the power of the first row can also reduce the power of the wind farm. This result are mainly due to the wind break, and mainly due to the wake effect caused by wind breaks. To clarify the mechanism of Wind break effect. We performed the we performed the, the energy budget analysis. This is done by integrating the kinetic energy in the volume surrounding each turbine. The first equation indicates that the turbine power output includes seven different sources and things. This finger shows the relative contribution of each term. Clearly, the contributions of mean pressure gradient and SGS stress are usually much smaller than the other terms. In the first row region, the contribution of total pressure increases with wind break height. However, this effect saturates for high wind breaks in downstream region. As a result, the contribution of dissipation becomes the dominant term for high wind breaks. For wind farms with, without a wind break, the kinetic energy flux dominates the wind farm performance. However, this scenario is not true anymore for wind farms with wind breaks. To illustrate it more clearly, we show the counter of kinetic energy flux in the vertical plane. For wind farms without wind breaks, the kinetic energy flux is positive and the turbine top and negative and the turbine bottom. Thus, the turbine can extract energy from both above and below. For wind farm with wind breaks, the kinetic energy flux is increased both at the turbine top and the turbine bottom. For low wind breaks, the increase at the turbine bottom is larger than that at the turbine top. As a result, the contribution of kinetic energy flux becomes negative. For high wind breaks, the increase of kinetic energy flux and the turbine top becomes much larger than that and the bottom. Thus, the contribution of kinetic energy flux becomes positive again. However, the power output itself is reduced, indicating that the kinetic energy flux can no longer be regarded as a measure of power output. 
Here comes the conclusion of my talk. First, low wind breaks can increase the power output of the wind farm. Second, wind breaks with a lower porosity are more effective. Third, the benefit of the wind break surface will be equal or greater than 3D. Fourth, wind break has a larger beneficial effect on the performance of wind turbine of the faster row than the wind turbine. Finally, the vertical kinetic energy flux can no longer be regarded as a measure of the amount of energy that can be extracted by wind turbines. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention.